those of you know me know that I judge investor pitches all the time. I'm, I'm interviewing candidates uh, for my businesses. And going through a lot of communication every single day, one thing I can tell you is that most people who are not very good at communication, the reason why they're not good is because they're trying to stuff a lot of information on the person of the, on the other side of the table. They do that is because they feel that, you know what, I need to give a lot of information, otherwise I'm missing out on the opportunity. But what's happening is you can only remember 5% of what the other person is saying. If I'm judging someone, I have judged, let's say, 10 startups. At the end of the day, when I'm making my decision with other judges, all of us remember like 5% of uh, what they have heard from the pitch. Now, imagine this, 95% of your effort was wasted. Are we at fault? No. Are you at fault? No. But is there a way to engineer what you want the person on the other side who's judging you or interviewing you to recall about you? Yes. Look at these letters. Now look away and try to recall how many letters can you remember? Maybe five, six, seven at most? Now look at this. When you look at them in the clumps, now NASA means something to you, CBI means something to you, NATO means something to you because you've heard about them from past experiences. Uh, they are contextual information. They're relatable to you. So your brain, instead of remembering seven letters, the brain is remember seven clumps of information, which means it can retain a lot more. So in your communication, if you give relatability, context, uh, examples, right, that's when people remember more. Relatability, for example, let's say you're explaining ghee to a Westerner who has never seen ghee or heard of ghee. What is ghee? So you can say, for example, it's a, a fatty liquid derived from milk that tastes very good and smells very good. Okay, um, means nothing to a person who's never tasted ghee. But if you say, hey, you know butter, right? Butter tastes great. This is clarified butter. So you melt butter, you clarify it, and that's ghee. It's better than butter. So somebody who knows butter would be like, okay, I get it. Butter, and this is better than butter. Hmm, okay. So is it accurate? No. But does it get the point across? Does it does a person understand it better than a fatty liquid derived from milk? Yes. So similarly, in your information, when you're communicating, especially we engineers do this a lot. We give a lot of jargons. Now, we don't know if the person on the other side of the table understands all those jargons or not, what their background they're coming from. When I came back from America, I remember in India, everybody talks in jargons. PGDM, uh, you know, all these three letter, five letter abbreviations, and I have no clue. And I would very openly say, I don't know what that means. Can you tell me? They would look at me like, who is this idiot? Right? But it's not my fault. I don't know. I, I have grown up in the US and I just never heard these uh, abbreviations. And that could might as well be the case with somebody sitting on the other side. So don't expect them to know what you know. Be as simplistic, as relatable, as contextual as possible. That way what happens is uh, people retain more about you. So if you're really deserving and you have good stuff to say, people remember that. Well, don't give everything all at one go. Have the emotional element of storytelling where people can hear you no by not getting tired. They can actually like, they can enjoy what you're saying. They can be intrigued by what you're saying and thereby uh, you have much better chances of succeeding in your communication and getting what you want rather than getting lost in the crowd where people don't remember all the good things that you've prepared for hours probably in advance, right? So make your communication simple and I wish you all success. Mm -hmm.